Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by The Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years. A year of change for casinos with Rhythm City and the Isla Capri now off the river. What's been the impact on the gaming industry and the community organizations that depend on some of that gaming money? Plus, taking to the water's edge, two programs that let you explore the Mississippi, plus a chance for you to ride the river in the cities. We have seen the biggest changes in casino gambling since the boats arrived more than 25 years ago. A multi-million dollar land-based casino is built by the Isle of Capri in Bettendorf, and the Rhythm City Casino leaves the river and arrives at the Interstate 80, Interstate 74 interchange. And to top it off, both have new management. But they also both have the same organizations in control of their licenses. And tonight, we talk with the top two administrators. Joining us is the president of the Regional Development Authority, which controls the Rhythm City Casino, Matt Mendenhall, and the president of the Scott County Regional Authority, which is the nonprofit sponsor of the Isla Capri Casino, Barry Anderson. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. This has been a heck of a year, and, and maybe we should start with you, Matt, because with the Rhythm City, it has been a, a major change. We saw kind of this whole, it's on the river, is the city going to buy it, the city doesn't buy it. All of this has gone through, and now you're on much stable ground, literally. That's right, and we're excited about all of the opportunity that is represented by that location out there. Uh, we're really trying, the casino's really trying to become an entertainment venue for the community and really has an interest in becoming very contributing in a lot of different ways to the community betterment. Well, and Barry, it's so weird because they both happen at the same time. Right. And, and because right. Rhythm City was, you know, so drawn out for a while, you almost got very little attention when, yeah. when uh, uh, Isla Capri moved inland. Yeah, they were pretty methodical in their approach, but yet uh, they had pretty high visions of what they wanted to do as far as coming on land-based. and. Uh, uh, took some time for them to get all of the renovation uh, completed, but it's uh, it's been a wonderful uh, change, and uh, we've certainly seen uh, you know uh, increased activity down there uh, since they've opened. Is that pretty much on on par of, with what you thought might happen? Uh, again, we don't really control the operations, right. but from what we heard from management of the aisle, I think they were projecting that once, uh, really once both boats got land-based, I think they, they saw it as a draw to the community and were anticipating increased revenues from uh, really both casinos opening. Well, Matt, I also wonder, because I know a lot of people, <laughs> when they saw the river boats, and the, the Bettendorf story from a couple decades ago that it almost leaves at the dead of night um, and that are these boats are going to stay here. We've got new management, new owners have come in uh, over the years. Now that you have, in your case, a, a resort that's at the corner of a major interchange, it, it seems to have a sense of permanence right now that, that seems to have calmed a lot of people. Absolutely. And again, there's just that excitement about what that area represents in terms of economic development. And again, there's just a, a commitment from the casino in a lot of different ways to making sure that the, con the uh, charitable part of that whole operation is also very strong. And let's talk about that because the RDA, tell us about the purpose of what is now called the Regional Development Authority. Well, it really started, and you know, you bring up uh, earlier the, the fact that the river boat, you know, was down in Davenport. And at that time, if you remember, there was a real strength of uh, wanting that purpose to be to revitalize that area. So having the boat down there at that time probably made a lot of sense and in the same way, you know, creating that focus on economic development uh, for where we're at now still carries that purpose. Yeah, if, if you think about it, because if you think of both sides of the river, when uh, Jumers had theirs in downtown Rock Island, it spurred the district area. Mm -hmm. The president helped mm -hmm. downtown. Uh, the Isla Capri or uh, Lady Luck before that right. uh, uh, really made a big difference in, in Bettendorf. Has that been a major contributor, you think, to the uh, area economy? Are these boats and, and what they do to the area? Well, absolutely. I, I would say that, and I know that uh, SCR has comparable numbers as well, but over this period of time since we started, I think it's $63 million or more that has been invested through the nonprofit sector, you know, through these charitable dollars. So, you know, you take that uh, in terms of the multiplier effect uh, and really mm -hmm. looking at what that impact is long term and where the Davenport downtown is now. 
uh, certainly wouldn't take credit for all of that, but certainly would be a contributor. Well, and Rhythm City has seen perhaps one of the biggest changes over the past year. Once again, taking a look uh, from April to April, almost double the admissions to more than 108,000 in the month of April and $2 million in added revenue. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, as, as the uh, former mayor uh, uh, very clearly pointed out that he didn't want to be the, the bad stepchild or whatever uh, to uh, the Isla Capri, Rhythm City doesn't seem to be that anymore. No, and, and we had similar increases. Just last year at this time, we granted out $800,000 in some, and this year it was $1.2 million. So that traffic you know, really is equating into more dollars for the community. And I do want to talk about that right now, actually, because you just went through your grant period. RDA awarded $1.2 million to 57 groups, and you do this twice a year. That's right. Where do these, uh, I know where the groups come from, but where do the decision process come from uh, when it comes to selecting who gets what and how much? Well, being new in the position, it really is impressive to see how strongly the board feels about the responsibility in these decisions and uh, really think carefully through what the best way to use the dollars are. Uh, we had $3 million of requests this year and 1.2 to, to grant out. So it really is a difficult decision and people ask, well, why they didn't get a grant? And typically it's just because we didn't have enough dollars. You know, all of these grants that come in are good for the community and they really do help our, our community become better for everybody. Oh, well, Barry, Scott County had 122 mm -hmm. requests funding totaling $3.2 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't chump change. You're giving right. out a large amount of money for community activities. Right. Yeah, and similar to what Matt uh, indicated, I mean, we had about $1.5 million to, to uh, award uh, this year, and it always is a tough decision. We go th about it uh, by dividing up uh, really the uh, the process in three main areas. We have uh, education, we have nonprofit, and we have governmental. Um, grant awards to consider and we use board members and panel members a total of 24 people to go through review the grants uh, re, uh, score them though to speak and make recommendations as to which ones they believe would be the most beneficial to the community uh, which then comes up to the board for final approval and uh, you know we are appreciative of the you know ability to make 1.5 million dollars of, of grants not only this year but when we add that to what we've done over the 25 years uh, SCRA's funded about 80 million dollars worth in our community and as Matt said that's that's really significant when you look at all of the needs that's out there from all these various uh, organizations that uh, really have significant programs whether it be uh, we've done everything from medical uh, equipment to uh, school to museums uh, all of these areas have tremendous needs and I see this as a way to help fund those particular programs I always wonder if you do keep tabs every uh, every grant period uh, that you got the biggest bang for the buck or, or that the money was going exactly where you wanted it to go yeah, I mean, and we get feedback from uh, after the grants awarded, the grantee then provides information back to us on the progress of that particular grant and what did it accomplish so we can actually get some sense of, okay, here's where we uh, made the decision to spend the dollars and how did that actually come to fruition after the grant uh, uh, program was completed. Well, Matt, when we talked about Rhythm City expanding and then you saw the aisle expanding as well, you were wondering whether or not this area was getting oversaturated with uh, uh, successful operations. I mean, there's not three boats now. There are three major casinos in the Quad City area. Then you add on perhaps Cedar Rapids wants to have one. Mm -hmm. Springfield's talking about a mini casino there. Then even add on to internet gaming, which mm -hmm. is uh, really picking up even more. Is, is there still that much growth that you see? Well, it's, it's hard to know, and I know that the industry overall is really monitoring this closely. Uh, the Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission you know, has a whole process that they go through to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen in terms of oversaturation. Uh, so they take that seriously as well. Barry, I mean, you've got to be considering that as well. Yeah, and, and, and these are really external factors that our organizations really can't control, but certainly there is a big uh, competitiveness out there for these dollars. and I. My own sense is at some point, yes, they'll reach a saturation point, um, and who knows when we'll hit to that that level, but like Iowa Raming, uh, Gaming and Racing Commission does monitor this closely and tries to uh, view these as are we hitting an oversaturation situation. Okay, and, and one other thing is that we've got pretty well new management going on. I mean, uh, Isla Capri now has Reno-based El Dorado Resorts mm -hmm. uh, that has taken over. What changes do you see in the future here? Um, really, to date, it hasn't had any change. They just took over May 1. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a contract with the aisle uh, for the license, which carries out through uh, 2025. And of course, that uh, contract was assumed by new management. 
Um, we've yet to meet them, but we understand they're now coming through the Quad Cities to uh, get a little more uh, information about what the community is all about. So we hope to meet with them uh, in the coming um, you know, few months, but we understand they really don't intend to make any substantial changes in the activities or operations as they exist now. But I wonder under such strict licensing, what changes can you really make? Yeah. Um, I, and I don't know that you can go much further. Right, okay. uh, and uh, again, I think enhancements maybe to what they already have. Uh, you know, there's still been discussion of possible uh, additions down on the riverfront itself that mm -hmm. might bring more folks down to the, you know, to the area. Whether that happens or not, I, again, I don't know. But uh, uh, I'm not sure that you can do a lot to enhance what's already there. Well, and Matt, it seems like the new management that has taken over the uh, Rhythm City has also seamlessly gotten through this past year. Yeah, and having an opportunity to meet Dan and that group, uh, it's just a committed group of people and they really have language around being committed to the community overall. And so it's, it's really uh, assuring to hear that from them. So we got through our spring grant period where you already uh, announced who's getting the money. You have another one in the fall. For community organizations, what do you look for for anybody who might think about applying in the fall? Uh, it really has a matter of, of looking at making the application simple for a, a reader to understand and really understand what the impact is. Again, uh, most of the grant applications that come in are very strong. Uh, they're all worthy of funding. And so it's just a matter of the board members looking at you know, what impact is made. So the more clear you can be about what that impact is, uh, in simple terms, it makes it easier for that comparison. And like Scott County, do you have an area of focus? Do you have uh, like three areas that you really keep an eye on? We, we really, at this time, have an area on economic impact is really our first priority. And then we have a, a education culture kind of category and then a human services category. So that's how we look at those applications. And Barry, for anybody who's thinking of applying for, for a grants under Scott County Regional Authority, I mean, you gotta start thinking about that right now. Yeah, and again, we post information out on our website that helps uh, individuals understand, you know, what the grant uh, process is and how they should construct uh, and respond to the grant application and demonstrate what their particular program and how it's going to benefit the needs of the community. And and <clears throat> then when we get closer to the fall, we'll we'll or we'll announce to uh, everyone really the opening of these uh, application processes. They're free to submit their grants. Um, it's all electronically now. We moved that direction uh, about a year or so ago, and it makes that process a little smoother, so there's not tons of paperwork. Uh, but we encourage anybody to uh, take a look at those and, and apply for uh, grants, and we'll, we'll give every one of them uh, um, uh, consideration as we go through and evaluate one to the other. Barry Anderson from the Scott County Regional Authority, Matt Mendenhall from the Regional Development Authority. I'm going to get it right. <laughs> I did not say riverboat, so I get points for that. Thank you both for joining us. We appreciate it. Well, welcome to June and the start of the summer season. Whether it's concerts, plays, or other attractions, this is the time of the year. People love to explore everything the cities offer. And each week, Laura Adams is all set to give you some details on how you can have fun when you go out and about. This is Out and About for May 29th through June 4th. Hi, I'm Laura Adams. Join the Walk for Wishes at Moline's Ben Butterworth Parkway June 3rd to support Make-A-Wish Illinois. Summit Church invites the public to their 98th annual Memorial Day service May 29th at 9 a.m. The Eastern Iowa Brass Band perform at the Herbert Hoover Presidential Museum in West Branch Memorial Day at 2 p.m. And the annual Quad Cities Criterium, a professional bike race, takes place in the village of East Davenport. While Augustana College is the site for the Quad City Senior Olympics May 30th through June 3rd. Enjoy the Riverbend Bronze Spring Concert at the First Congregational Church in Moline June 4th. Grab a lawn chair for the Moline Center's Thursday night summer concert series at Bass Street Landing and Friday Live at 5 summer concert series at the River Music Experience Plaza. Join Ballet Quad Cities for Ballet Under the Stars at the Lincoln Park Theater in Rock Island June 2nd through 4th. Choral Dynamics presents In the Springtime at the Orpheum Theater in Galesburg June 2nd through the 4th and the Black Box Theater presents the musical I Love You Because, a modern day look at romance based on Pride and Prejudice. Timberlake Playhouse presents the musical Mary Poppins at the Mount Carroll Theater June 1st through the 11th. Circuit 21's run of the musical Snapshots with music by Stephen Schwartz continues on the Rock Island Theater's stage. For more information, visit WQPT.org.
Thank you, Laura. Local singer songwriter Randy Leesman may be best known for being part of the bands The Candy Makers, The Lowdown and the Zach Harris Band, but he's also been known to take the stage by himself and we caught up with him at the River Music Experience as he performed the song Life. I was thinking about the heartache I've been through When all of a sudden a voice inside me grew Said there's always today to find out something new So try not to waste it oh. You've got to face it, baby, believe it or not It all boils down to you Ooh, what now? What now, baby? Ooh, what now? Cause I really wanna know, yeah Ooh, what now? What now, now that I've laid it all She thinks that she's a real big deal I can't tell you how many times she's wrong If she only knew what mattered And what she could have done I know what's done is done It's a good time Sometimes we laugh Sometimes we cry Sometimes we make it Oh, but this time I can't shake it She wants in on the game But she don't know how it's played I know what's done is done But it's a good times that I miss All that matters to me now Is the time that we have left Oh no, we can't keep going Can't keep going For you to find Life, life, life is an open mind On the brightest stage For you to shine Life, life, life is an open book On the forgotten shelf for you to find Life, 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 life Ooh. Life, 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 life
life, 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 life. Ooh. Randy Leesman with life. The summer season has special meaning for people in the cities. For one thing, you'll see countless people drawn to the water, making good use of the mighty Mississippi. One group is encouraging that. River Action wants to protect this vital waterway, but also spearheads ways people can better use the river and even learn from it. And joining us is Laura Morris, Program Director with River Action. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You look forward to this time of the year, don't you? I do, yeah. It's our busiest time of the year. Well, you've got, first off, the 13th Annual Explore the River Series just mm -hmm. getting started at the beginning yeah. of June. Yep. How big is that for the community? I mean, you seem to attract a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. Last year we had, oh, a, a ton of people attend the event. This year we're hoping for a little bit more. We do have 55 presentations in totality. That's a, a big undertaking, I right. think, for us. Um, we have four a week. We have both Channel Cat Talks and Riverine Walks. Right. And, and so the community really has a great opportunity throughout the whole summer to do a, a learning activity, whether that be right on the river or in the watershed itself. Channel Cat Talks include the I-74 muscle relocation, mm -hmm. talking about the new bridge, as also history lessons that are yeah. going on. You try to touch on a bunch of different topics, don't you? Yeah, so normally we try to do half that are environmental focused and half that tend to lean toward the humanities, okay. which would be art, music, culture, history, things like that. Um, so we do have a wide array to choose from. The I-74 muscle relocation will be a popular one this year on the Channel Cat, as well as our historical ones, those seem to attract quite a large crowd. And, and the fact that it's uh, on the Channel Cat makes it even a better experience, mm -hmm. doesn't it, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Just to get out. Yeah. And, and you also said the Riverine Walks, also historic, but I noticed one of the topics was, I'm freezing out here. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that yeah, one. Yeah, that's with Dr. Tim Muir from Augustana College. He's a biology professor there. He is doing research um, about turtles. Uh, they can freeze over winter, and then in the spring, they are okay. They wake up and they're, almost? Yeah, they're ready to go. And if only we could do that. I yeah. know. Well, it, that's why he's <laughs> studying them, because I think there's there's some um, indication on whether or not that could be used for some organ donations and things like that. So that is one of the riverine walks. It is our second riverine walk topic. And riverine walks mean what? Because Channel Cat, obviously, you get on the yeah. boat and you go someplace. The riverine walk is what? They're guided tours with a presenter. Um, they have different meeting places um, all over the Quad Cities, depending on what topic the presenter wants to speak about. Um, but again, they are just led by the professor. Most of them are pretty easy just mm -hmm. so that it's accessible to everyone. Um, but some of them do range on the more difficult side if, if it's more of a hike. Sure, yeah, exactly. Well, and one of them involves uh, bald eagles, which everyone's interested yeah. in. And also recycling, because there's such an attention to the health of the river, and recycling and, and the cleaning of the riverbank mm -hmm. seems to be such a critical issue for so many people in this area. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's at Midland Davis. Um, they will be presenting on, on kind of what they should be recycling, how to recycle, why it's important, their system when it gets to their plant, things like I'll actually be on that one if anyone wants to join. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Got to talk about the big Father's Day of yeah. Of course, Father's Day, 33rd annual Ride the River coming up on uh, June 18th. Yep. You got the Build a Trike uh, uh, program that's going on. Tell mm -hmm. people a little bit about that because that's a great idea. Yeah, this year we're partnering with Mississippi Bend Trikes. They're a local chapter of Ambux. Um, we will be building eight uh, bikes for disabled children in our community. Um, those, uh, they have a list of names and we, we kind of picked them. And, and the bikes are, are specific to each child. So some of them will be the basic structure. Some will have hand pedals or straps and things like that. We'll be building those the day before, so the 17th, from 9 to 1 p.m. Um, in the QC Times parking lot. And then tell me a little bit of where that idea came from. I mean, it's such a fantastic idea to give, especially on that weekend, Father's sure. Day weekend. Sure, we have a committee, and it was brought up at our committee that I this see. was going on. Um, the Mississippi Bend Trikes have kind of made a huge impact in the area already. Um, they have partnered with a lot of organizations, and it was brought up, and we jumped on the opportunity right away. We would like to get everyone moving um, on the bike <laughs> trails. That's a that's a big thing for us. Now, is Ride River the biggest event that you have that's going on as far as the bikes are concerned? Yeah, as far, as far as the bikes, yeah, that's our biggest 
based event that and, we and do And is there have. registration or, I mean, do you just show up? Yeah, so you can register at um, riveraction.org slash ride the river, um, and we will be taking registrations the day of as well. Well, let's be honest, riveraction.org's got all of the details and yeah. all the schedules for all of these things. Exactly. So it's really important just to check that out. Exactly. Then I have to talk to you about the uh, Riverfront Trail Bridge. That's sure. been, uh, you know, it was proposed, I think, about two years ago, mm -hmm. and it's been an ongoing fundraising event. Um, you hit some milestones, but what's the status right now? Yeah, yeah, so we are still in the planning process. We've applied to multiple grants and are kind of waiting to hear back on that. We're looking for kind of a large contributor at this point. Um, and to just get to things remind going. people what the bridge is, would, would this be over near Bechtel Park in that area? It is um, right by River Heritage Park. That'll be the drop down point. Okay, yeah. and it's a historic looking bridge it that takes us back to the, what, 1800s or yeah, so? Yeah, 1856, I believe, well is the done. year. Yeah, <laughs> rattled that one off. I'm very impressed. Yeah. So it's still in the planning stages. What, what's the schedule then? I mean, when could actually construction start? Oh, I don't know if we've determined an exact mm -hmm. date for construction. One thing we are adding is a component of museum without walls or a storyline of some of the other really important locations um, with the Rock Island lines. Um, so we're still kind of incorporating a lot of different things, but it still is in our plan and one of our goals to complete the first bridge um, project. But really, with River Action, Laura, it just seems that you got the Mississippi River respect it, mm -hmm. take care of it, but really enjoy it. Yes, exactly. Bring people to the river. That's one of our missions. Laura Morris, thank you so much for thank River you. Action. We appreciate you being here. Have fun this summer. Oh, thanks. And enjoy uh, uh, some of these discussions that are on the river. There's so much to learn, isn't there? Yes. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Just a reminder, you can register for Ride the River and learn more about Build a Trike program by heading to the group's website. That's riveraction.org. Very easy. WQPT is doing its part to support the military men and women in the cities who are serving our nation. We call it embracing the military, and it's time for you to lift your weight and prove you can do it better than anyone else. The Fitness Center is sponsoring its Be the Rock on the Island weightlifting competition. Adult men and women out of high school can take part in either bench press, deadlift, or bench and deadlift competitions. It's coming up Saturday, June 10th at the Fitness Center. And there's an effort going on right now to save the Arsenal Golf Course, a 50-50 raffle drawing is set for June 15th to help raise money to keep the 120 year old course open. The drawing will be right after the Commander's Cup golf tournament. You can contact the golf course for more information. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Public affairs programming on WQPT is brought to you by the Singh Group at Merrill Lynch. Serving the wealth management needs of clients in the region for over 25 years.